So the summer season is wrapping down and a lot of our crops is basically on its last leg. So we're transitioning now into the fall season. So in this video, we're going to be doing a garden tour of what's left for the summer season. And we're going to start right now. This row of tomatoes is spent. These are our patio determinant tomatoes. They have done their job and we have a bunch of our starts for fall in growing on a rack right now. So one of the projects that we're about to work on is revitalizing the soil of as many plants as we can so that we can get it prepared for our fall garden. This is our uh, spicy hot pepper row and they have been, most of these have been very prolific, especially our cayenne, our jalapeno, and what about our serrano? I, Mixed with the serranos? There's actually a new, like it came through with a new uh, crop right now. There's a bunch of green ones on there. I know we've been getting them when they're red, but they're actually really good either way. They're just and, super hot. And I see some flowers on them, so probably we might get a second wave with these. I wasn't really happy about the poblanos this year. Uh, definitely going to kill those off and we'll just do another batch from our own seeds. A lot of these we got from the local nursery around here for the simple fact we, by the time we got here, we wasn't able to have a garden and ready. So getting the starts was our second best option. Now this is our okra and this morning, these okras was not this big. However, okra loves heat and lately, like I said, it's been real hot here and these are just huge. Some of these that are very large that might be too woody, we're just going to allow the, the outer shell get hard and probably just leave them on the vine. What you think? I say we just leave them on the vine, let the seeds and harvest the seeds from that. I have an abundance of seeds that we haven't even planted yet, so. We'll have more. Okay. Maybe we'll do a giveaway at some point. Yeah. So. Basically how I like to harvest our okra is I like to cut this, the stem part off with the okra and I just use the leaves as uh, extra fertilizer, as a chop and drop basically. Looks are deceiving on those Star Davids. Star David is a lot bigger than like your Clint's and Spineless or your um, Cajun Jambalaya okras. So here we have our Armenian cucumbers. They're starting to take off. Uh, I'm, I can't wait to try these. We tried one of them. It went bad at the one end, but we were able to cut that off and still use it. Have we even tried it? I did. Okay. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. I think this was only one or maybe two seeds. Hopefully be uh, kind of prolific as our cucumbers on the uh, vines of going horizontal. My question is, because we haven't grown these before, when are these going to start puttering out on us? <laughs> yeah. Because, and the reason I'm asking is we have uh, sugar snap peas and I have sugar daddy dreams. So yeah, we're going to be probably cutting these off pretty soon. This is our jicama plant. And as you can see, it's vining very well. Hopefully around October, November time, once the leaves start dying down, we can harvest this. If y'all ever grown this and you think we can harvest some of the leaves as an edible, like in a salad or something, comment down below and let us know. These are our cut and come along uh, zinnias. I thought they were gonna be not so well because they started off being very leggy. So I've been cutting them down and cutting them down and now they're getting a lot bushier. Uh, what I've been basically doing is I would get where the wise part is at and then I'll cut that off and then we'll just put them in a vase on the table as a like a decor and they just stay good for like weeks uh, about i think we have some there for about two weeks now on the table i right? just replaced those yeah. yeah here we have in these two containers was our when we moved to this property we had a thriller spiller and filler where the trailing uh, rosemary was our spiller and they have you as you can see it's still been thriving 
the parsley on here was the filler and they're going to see we're about to chop those down and get these uh, planters ready for another fall season and uh yeah i think we'll probably put some cilantro in here next time what do you think probably banana peppers galore like i have a ton i have canned so many i've canned so many of these that right now i'm basically seeing how big they'll get because once I cut them, I have a window of time that I need to can them, and I just don't want to do that this week. But they have been very prolific. Is this something that you want to overwinter? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I love those peppers. What was it, a pickled pepper or something like that? Yeah, I've been doing like Subway style yes, pickled peppers. Yes, I love those on the sandwiches you make for my lunch. Yeah, so I mean, this has been my first year with these and it's been a lot. So on this trellis, we have our spaghetti squash and we've harvested a few already. And I think we, oh, we got one right here. Looked like it fell off the vine. Ooh. So we got our spaghetti squash here and a butternut squash right here. I think you we already have one or two in the um, in the house. Yes. Okay. I'll be making those uh, actually this week sometime. So this was our first successful year growing squash besides Mrs. Naked Gardener's favorite squash. Let's go take a look at it. My favorite is the Zucchino Rampicante. Now, last year it was my favorite because I was able to enjoy it like a zucchini. And the flavor is just like, kind of like buttery and nutty. This is the first year that I've been able to have it hardened off. And I thought I liked it the other way. I'm in love with it once it's hardened off. I was able to treat it almost like a mashed potato, just a healthier version. Now you can also use these once they get it to this hardness as a butternut squash. That, okay, so that's the thing that I really love about these is that they can be used just like you would a butternut squash. As a matter of fact, I think it's difficult to tell the difference in the taste between this and a butternut squash. The other thing is, is that squash bugs just, it, it, it is so disease resistant that we didn't have to worry about this one at all. Yeah, it's very disease resistant and pest resistant. So if you have a hard time uh, growing squash, because of the squash Try bugs this. or squash vine borers, these are your go-to ones. So these are your ones that you're gonna always be growing, huh? This is always, it's a staple in our garden. Our mosquito hunters, I love them. Now this portion was our experiment of our no-till garden. And it started out very bad because of the store-brought soil that we had since we can't find a local supplier to bring us any type of compost. So eventually I had to start mixing our own potting mix and digging a hole, putting our potting mix in there, and putting our transplants in here. So we got our squash and our cucumbers. We got actually two types of cucumbers in here. We have a dragon egg cucumber. Uh, that kind of looks, I think we have one to harp oh, right here. And it's a cute little uh, cucumber, tastes very good, especially pickled. I prefer actually to have that one for salads. It has a waxier skin. Oh, does it? Yeah, and what I've been learning with canning, because I am just learning, is that the cucumbers that have waxy skin or more than four to eight hours after picking should be used in salads and some of the harder new ones need to be used for pickling. The dragon egg is perfect for fresh salads, in my opinion. Here we have our pickle bush uh, cucumbers. Now, the, for some reason, I thought the pickle bush were gonna be a more of a bush variety, but what it is, is a cluster variety. So we had two of these in here and we've been picking these like crazy. I've just noticed, I picked a lot of them yesterday and they grown that big already. That one was not ready yesterday. Yeah, so you gotta treat these, and once they get for these, once they get this big, they're not real good as a pickle, uh, but they're good as a kind of almost like a slicer. The taste definitely change on these. 
you want to kind of get them to about when they get this size. This is a good size for a pickle uh, variety of that. Or you can actually also do this size. Yeah, I like getting those tiny ones in bunches if I can to pickle. But these, I mean, I think there was another one I saw on here early. Or even like this size. This is a, another good size to get these as a uh, pick, quick pickling or relish type ordeal. Oh, right here. So these pickle bush grow so fast, so quick, it's almost like paying attention to okra. You got, once you blink three times, they just grow that big. Oh, wow. God, dog it. You missed another one? No, two more. Uh -huh. Oh, dang. <sighs> now these two are something that Mrs. Naked Gardener introduced me to. These are the sunchokes. Now these are a great alternative to potatoes. Now they are high in fiber, so they're also known as farty chokes. But I enjoyed these, uh, especially if they're fermented. They're not uh, as bad on your stomach, uh, but they're great probiotic. And I can't wait to get some more of these so we can ferment them. Now I recommend with sun chokes because once you, if you if you don't have a situation where you can't harvest as you go or harvest as you need them, I would recommend doing a large batch fermentation because after you harvest them, they go bad in four days. And the also good thing, uh, which you just brought up a good point, uh, to grow these in a container because they will be uh, very invasive and they will just take over your yard if you don't grow them in a container. That's why we use these 20 gallon containers growing them. We like to control some of these invasive plants. Yes. Now what we have on the back side of our garden is we have uh, right here on this trellis, we have our cantaloupe. Uh, these actually not as big as what we want them to. Uh, I think we have one, two, three, four on the vine. I just found this one looked like it was, oh, it's kind of rotten. Look. Let's go ahead and get it and I'll, the, the chickens really tore up the last one. Okay. They loved it. So luckily nothing goes to waste anymore on our property. Now that we have compost, worm farms, and poultry. Over here, we mentioned about the squash that we didn't uh, remember planting, but it was actually called a honey boat uh, squash. And we harvest one of those already. And now I think we have, yep, we got another one, possibly almost ready. I think it is almost ready. Yeah, I have one that matches that one inside the house. So that can be like. Oh yeah, yeah. that was definitely ready. So kind of small, but, and we haven't tasted it yet. So we're, we're definitely going to be ready for that. We also have a spaghetti squash above your head. Where? Oh, how did that get over there? So, yeah. Cool. Which I'm cool with because I love spaghetti squash. Yeah. Now, w since we couldn't find a large uh, place to buy mulch and, and quantities, reasons why this one's all grass and, and everything, but we're definitely going to have to get this ready for my peas because I don't want any competition with my peas. You don't want to have to go digging for your peas because your competition is still going to be me. No, because I'll cut you deep. I will eat I'll them. Cut you I'll cut you deep. I don't think I'm going to grow watermelon on a trellis again. Uh, we'll do it more of it in a contained area because it just spreads everywhere. We've harvested two, three of them already, and they're the yellow meat one from what we got from Jess. We already harvested off that one, and it died off after that. Yeah. These are, I want to say, moonbeam yellow meat ones. Yeah, and uh, these are actually pretty good, especially with a Redmond salt. I like to put salt on my watermelon. Uh, I never did before until I had it with that salt. Yeah it just brings out the flavor of the watermelons. And so it tastes so much better. As you can see, we have a lot to do to get into the transitioning phase of the fall season. We got a lot of 
seedlings that's starting to pop up for our fall. So if you like these video, make sure you give us a thumbs up. We'll put a video on the side for you to follow along for other garden tours. Until the next time, let's grow together.